By the early 60s, a structural weakness was discovered in the tail section design of the B-52. Severe turbulence could result in a structural failure of the tail and loss of the aircraft. Preceding the accident, the aircraft was flown by another crew and they developed an in-flight mechanical problem with the airplane. They diverted the airplane into a base in Massachusetts. And so they rounded up my crew and had us go to Massachusetts to return the plane. We planned our route depending on the weather, which was forecast to be quite good. There were some areas of rain and snow, but at the altitudes we were at, we expected to be in the clear. this area of moderate turbulence, so we requested a change in altitude to try and get ourselves into smoother conditions. And while we were affecting that change in altitude, the turbulence became severe. I remember having a clear thought, I think I've still got it. And then it became completely uncontrollable and it went over inverted and there was no recovering from that. Baylock Command was ordered, and people started egressing the airplane, which results in immediate depressurization and a loss of cabin pressure, and pretty much chaos, because everything that's not fastened down departs. Now all of a sudden you go from there, a warm, comfortable cocoon, almost instantaneously, into a really harsh outside element where the wind is full in your face. You're traveling at the speed the airplane was, approximately 500 miles an hour. And you're into, you've left a warm, heated environment into sub-freezing temperatures. I mean, your adrenaline is pumping and you are frightened. And it hit the ground, came through this small tree, your first instinct is to get help. And you want to grab somebody and say, hi, help me. And there's nobody. The mechanical things of trying to get out of the parachute that made me begin to think, you must survive. There will, help will be here if you can survive long enough. Next day, I was able to get a portion of the parachute out of the tree construct a shelter and I was also able to dig down through the snow to where I could get the sleeping bag on the ground. I felt certain that aircraft, search aircraft were airborne and looking, but I also knew that they would not be able to operate in the mountains below the cloud deck and so I resigned myself to they will not find me today my priorities became survival.
Major McCormick was the first one found. During his descent, he was able to see the lights from a farmhouse. And daylight the next morning, he was able to make his way to the farmhouse. So he was the first one recovered. And while I was in the hospital, they found two of the other three. And one was not found until after I left the hospital. The other three were deceased. Um, the last one to be found, Sergeant Wooten, was in a, a remote wooded area but near enough to where he could see a house. And he had tried to make his way to the house, but he had uh, physical injuries he suffered during the egress from the airplane and was a victim of exposure. I went back uh, that summer. I returned and there's a monument erected to the citizens of the town who volunteered to search for the crew. And Bless their hearts, I take my hat off to them. Uh, no offense to the people in Maryland, but I chose the summer to visit. 